And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and one, two, four, nine. G41 Nazgul, if you prefer. Back with Starfield. Everyone seems more distant in the lodge. I guess that is to be expected. Let's you forget how much you take a place like the lodge for granted. Until it's threatened. Hmm? <laughs> Sorry. I, uh... I've been lost in thought for a bit. Things are gonna be rough for a while. Lodge has wounds that need healing. Constantly will be monitoring everyone's vitals for signs of continued trauma. Oh man, this is just rough. <clears throat> we do Sarah Morgan of all people. Let's see. Talk to Keeper Aquilius. Who? Oh. I'm a student of history. Which also makes me a student of war, schemes, and betrayal. I think I'll do this main quest and I'll call it a day. Or something with the main quest, because I've been doing quite a few main quests. Keeper Aquilus, can we have a moment? Oh, Mateo. It's been too long. How are your parents? Your mother's still struggling with that azalea garden? No, she figured that out a while ago. Had to adjust the pH levels in the soil. But, Keeper, I didn't come to catch up. Oh. Well, what's on both your minds? Oh. Yeah. How humanity comes together. Uh... How we are to love each other, even as our universe becomes even more complex. That's not exactly what we mean. Keeper, when you talk about unity, well, does it mean anything else? Something secret? Perhaps you should talk about this inside. Oh, I see something secrecy. Well, if you're planning on having a skin alive, let me tell you something. I can fight back real hard. I got this new gun that this guy gave me. I'm eager to test out, so don't try it. What are you saying, Mateo? Think you can fight back? Where is everybody? Maybe I should change my outfit to something. Huh, now that we have a little privacy, why don't you tell me exactly what it is that brought you to here? They're like nothing we've ever seen, Keeper. Gravitational distortion, sub-audio harmonic sequencing, unidentifiable energy fluctuations. Uh, I caught half of that. So, these things are unusual? Even in your experience, there have always been mysteries that seem to defy our understanding of the universe. Beyond rational thought, we enter life as an act of someone else's faith in us. There's no way of knowing who we will become, and yet, the risk is made anyway. So you've pushed into the unknown, not knowing where it would take you. And it's brought you here. I think I can. If you're willing to find your way in the dark for a bit longer, I can give you a path to discovering its meaning. There's an old story, far older than the Sanctum Universum, of someone who walked the settled systems and saw every corner of it. This pilgrim claimed he found the true meaning of unity. I always thought of it as just a parable for trying to bring humanity together, but... 
Maybe it's more. I'm not sure if he was. But if what you're looking for is connected, then anything might be possible. In my story, the pilgrim met the founders of the House of Enlightenment and the enigmatic cult of the Varun, and he gave them each a part of the truth. Then he goes to his final resting place to live out the rest of his days in contemplation of infinitum addendum, his addition or contribution to the infinite. But what if the story isn't a metaphor, but a code, a way of finding the pilgrim again, or at least his grave? Yes, something must be there. I just can't put my finger on it. Maybe the answer will become clear when we have more. The House of Enlightenment and Varun have versions of this story. The Enlightened work out of the well here in New Atlantis, helping the poorest citizens find a better life for themselves. Varun worshippers are more enigmatic, but there is a lone zealot that was captured recently for attacking UC ships. I visited her a couple of times. Hopefully, she'll be willing to talk to you as well. I'll stay here with the Keeper. We need to catch up. And I wouldn't mind asking him a few more questions. All right, sweet. <clears throat> Let's see, let's see. Talk to the room prisoner. What's this one? Talk to the house of alignment. House for room. Really don't know much about them. I think that's how they like it. Talk to the Varun prisoner. Talk to the House of Enlightenment. Spaceport. <coughs> Let me just save. You see security office guy. <clears throat> After that business with the turmoil, it's good to get back to small crimes and petty thieves. Ah, uh, let me just save. Oh, Captain. It's good to see you again under much calmer circumstances. You wouldn't be here about the job, would you? Might not be worth your time, considering your rank. See you later. Okay, I'm guessing... I'm just gonna try and walk in there. I'm gonna just walk in there, and I'm hoping that they don't mind. Alright, if you have a problem with me going back here, say something. Heard the cabinets assembled some kind of elite anti-terramorph unit. About downtime. 
Wonder if they're taking applications. A visitor? I have all the company I need. He knows not the truth. He sends another to ask more incessant questions. I never can make heads or tails of these guys. The Great Serpent waits in the shadows. He will entwine the universe, and all but the faithful will be made as dust. That is the truth. No more, no less. It would be really helpful if you told us about it. If that even matters in the slightest to you. Yes, I have spoken to your keeper about this. I will tell you what I told him. And then you will leave me. Jinan Varun meets the Unbeliever. He gives false prophecy to Jinan. But such is Jinan's conviction in the Great Serpent. He does not hesitate. He cuts the Unbeliever down. But the Unbeliever returns. Jinan realizes the Great Serpent is testing him, and he will not be found wanting. Four times they fight. Over 120 rotations of the planet they are on. Remember these four battles, Jinan, the Unbeliever says. Remember these 120 rotations. But Jinan knows this is blasphemy and delivers the killing blow. That is all. Then we are done. Leave me. You ever hear that one about the uh, orphan and the platypus? Funny stuff. Kansas. Fair enough. Right, I'm surprised I've yet to, to, to see the inside of the security office. Here's hoping the street continues. Uh, we just went in there. What are you talking about? I think I could live on coffee if I had to. Well. Oh, you're kind of in the way. I know people say it's a scam. If you're but looking for a tracker, a you come to the right place. It's if like not, well. Whoa, this place looks in the bare days. We run a number of social programs from financial aid to food banks. If it's about the financial or food assistance programs, we are backlogged. Don't worry, we're doing everything we can. Oh, you're not. Sorry. Can I help you? It's actually important, as strange as that may seem. Listen, I've talked about this with him a ton of times, and there's no record of a unity pilgrim, but since you both insist, our early records are mostly administrative. Humanitarian projects, group counseling notes, charity expenditures. But there is a series of exchanges the founding members recorded in a lot of detail. It's the closest thing I have to what Aquilus is describing. A man walks into the first house of enlightenment. The founding members just call him the Drifter. So they think he's a charity case at first, but no, the Drifter Ask them a bunch of questions. If your philosophy is built on an individual's own morality, what about the second person? That second person might disagree. Isn't the problem of two what you're really looking for? And the founders respond, each individual must understand how the second person lifts them up. All of human effort is a story of cooperation pushing us forward. And it kind of goes on like that. 
He comes back every week for a year. Same conversation every time. Second person this, the problem of do that. I also had the number two with a fiery passion. It's part of our core principles. There's no God pushing us to do good for some eternal reward. We have to help each other because we choose to. If no one takes responsibility for making the settled systems better, then we're just leaving it to the tyrants to bully the rest of us. Honestly, I think the farming members made it all up. There was a little more hesitation being openly atheist in the early days. I think they were experimenting with writing their own scripture. Fortunately, that got abandoned pretty quick. After the records of the Drifter end, you never see anything like it again. Besides what the Keeper would say about it? Sounds like a gathering point, or a center. Or in mathematics, it would mean one, like the one, the first or the beginning. Always happy to help. If you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of aid efforts to coordinate. It's not as bad as everyone says. We should visit sometime. How are you liking that laser gun? Pew pew! What the frick? That's the first time I ever heard somebody say that. Right, let's see, where am I? Up oh, down here again. <coughs> I wish I didn't run out of oxygen so fast. Aside from the fact that two attacks have happened, one from a xenomorph, another one from a crazy space person. Eh. I mean, you're not really good at your job if you can't stop either, right? You know, there are folks I sometimes see only once every few years. In between, they're just out there. Jumping. I know who you are. Well, you're back. What did you learn? Was there something hidden in their stories? Like we thought? Hmm. Planets are often named by number. That second might mean the second planet in the system. What else did you learn? If there really is a location the Pilgrim wanted us to find, those do sound awfully like coordinates. Was there anything else? Yes. What he added to infinity. Maybe that points to a name. If we're looking for his resting place, we'd need to know the name of the star system, wouldn't we? Let's see. We have something that could be coordinates. Something that could point to a planet in the system. But what's the name of the system? Infinitum addendum. What if we break down the parts? No systems named finite or add. That just leaves in and dumb. <laughs> well, that's certainly how I feel. Yes, that's it. The second planet in Indum. At 4 and 120. 
That's where you'll find the pilgrim's resting place. And from there, maybe you'll find the true meaning of unity. Before you go, you've now spoken to many different perspectives in our universe. In a way, you'll be carrying their philosophies with you on this journey. I know you're looking for a specific unity, but if you had to guess what it was, what interpretation would you give it? Ah, but what makes something like that holy? Gravity is also a force that brings things together. Should that be sanctified? It is one of the great contradictions of belief. We feel the presence of something out there, but we insist that it is also everywhere. So you think this word unity describes that divine unknowableness that the pilgrim searched for? This guy's really hard to follow. Can we just get a straight answer? Well, I won't keep you any longer. This has been fun, I have to admit. Go, find your truth. That first jump, <laughs> it changes you, uh, unlocks something within you. Have you felt it? All right, let's get going. Let's go to Indum 2. Where's the Indum? Okay, I've already been to the star system. I've surveyed this place. Attacks, no random encounter. So let's keep it like that. <clears throat> Only contraband in your cargo and your ship's cargo holders will be protected by its shielded cargo capacity. Okay. Sight is clear. Set start. All right, it takes the ship. Quest and missions. I'm looking at the main quest. Moody. Okay. <clears throat> Roughly six missions. Search for clues on Unity. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it.
Let's see. Pilgrim's Rest. This place? Turn your back for a minute and nature takes it all back. Not a bad place for a pit stop. You got a beat on anything? What about here? Is there anything here? Where's that last book? Oh, come on. There we go. I might have cheated a little bit. It's empty. Am I not knocking shit over? Is here to go to Scorpion Sting. Oh, where is that at? All the way out here? Alright, who is this that yes. we saw Rambler? All we need is enough to do some field repairs to just get back to home dock. I had a good feeling about you. We just need a little. Two units of ship parts will do. Alright, here you go. You're a lifesaver. Here, take these for your help. All right, time to land down here and see what we got. <clears throat> Ancient ruins? Your, your ship's maneuver will be affected by how fast you're traveling. Set your throttle too fast or too slow will reduce your ship's turning point, turning speed. Everything 
checks out. I'm guessing this is it. Oh, what the fuck is he you? Those ruins, they look ancient. Oh, Vladimir would go nuts for this. Very too. Right, let's try and stay away from the thing with Barbara over there. No, I don't want to pull out my gun. Take it easy. What is this even supposed to do? I hear more of those bug things. Oh, I think I get it. Wait. Okay. I was like, wait a minute, is this Scorpio? Turns out it is. Jeez Christ, send me all, all across the universe. This? Or this? What the fuck? He did. Now it's all starting to make sense. You should come aboard. There's another starborn here who is very interested in meeting you. I can speak for myself. Constellation ship. You weren't invited to this meeting, but much of our conversation has been about you. It's only fitting you should join us. I will personally guarantee your safety, as long as you come in peace. And think of it as a ceasefire meeting. You're one shot at getting those answers you must desperately want.
Ooh, I leveled up. This is a weird docking procedure. Air pressure, seals, ship integrity, all good. Docking is complete. Good work, Captain. Whoa, this is one heck of a ship. So, this is a ceasefire, right? No guns, no firing. Whoa. Hello, again. <laughs> Do you remember the Emissary, perhaps? And their ship, the Helix? I believe they ambushed you above Neon and demanded that artifact you worked so hard to gain. Thank you for the stellar introduction. Your success is unprecedented. Before you came, we were just discussing how continued use of force against you is unwise. Yes, we did. We are not a monolithic people. The Starborn are individuals. Some are united in cause. Others are in it for themselves. We are all in it for ourselves. Some of us are just more honest. The Emissary threatened your ship, demanded you hand over your artifact. How is that so different from what I did? We needed to warn you off. Every encounter with one of our kind could spell disaster. For whom, exactly? I say whoever can collect them should. And who gets to say that? You? Me? The Emissary? I have debated morality for near infinity. And all I have found are groups of people enforcing their will on others. Rules and laws spoken as principles, but backed by arms and violence. Enough. We have more to discuss. The unity. You are on the path to it. It is a place, a gateway. It is where we were reborn. You've really come a long way since the Welcome to Constellation speech, haven't you? I'm not who you think I am. This universe is only the first one you've been to. I've seen hundreds. Where I came from, I was the one who ran to the Eye. I left you behind to protect the artifacts, and the Hunter killed you. One of me, at least. I collected the remaining artifacts, and they opened the way to the center of my universe. <clears throat> and the doorway to an infinite number of others. That is the Unity. When I stepped into it, I became a Starborn. It's how I've entered other worlds, including yours. They are all connected. I have to. This is bigger than all of us. All the artifacts are needed to complete the armillary and open the way to the Unity. In every universe, the Starborn fight over them. Innocent people die. You've witnessed the power granted by the Temples. The anarchy that can be unleashed. Someone has to decide who should get them. Here it comes. The Emissary tells you only the worthy should enter heaven. You're twisting what I mean. They're hypocrites. They use the chaos caused by the hunt for the artifacts to establish an order where they decide who's worthy. I attacked your lodge because I wanted the artifacts, and you held me off. You got away. That wasn't some morality play. 
You didn't survive because of righteousness. You won because of persistence, luck, and skill. As I have done countless times. I was also human once. But what does it matter who or what I was when eternity is within your grasp? It means I've seen thousands of universes, collected their artifacts, been to their temples. You have a small taste of their power, but it keeps going. You're learning. My other self wants you to walk the path he walks, to give up, to appreciate the universe you have. Easy for a person who's seen everything, done everything. I think you should see it for yourself. You've never come this far. Not in all the universes I've seen. The path to the unity is opening to you. You're going to tip the scales one way or another. Better your hand be on one of our sides. I want a truce between all three of us. Give you some time to think over which approach to the unity is the one you want. Mine, or the Hunter's. Yes. Let's see how willing you are to live under someone else's rules. Just remember, one of us isn't trying to judge you. Wow, my blood. The unity is meant for whomever can get there. Don't fall for that talk of worthiness. They enter the unity, take artifacts from others, employ force. All the things I do. I am many things, but I would never tell anyone what to do with their gifts. That is your decision, not someone else's. The Emissary wants to become the judge of who gets to enter, but the Unity itself doesn't judge. To see what would happen, of course. You might not understand just how many times I've done this. Usually, you're the one who ends up dead, and whoever cries over your body goes on to become the Emissary. Sometimes I manage to get you all bunched up and take care of the problem in one go. And sometimes the emissary has gotten to me first and I never arrive. Hundreds and hundreds of variations of me, packing through Constellation. And it's almost never you. You making it to your ship on your own. That's mm, new. I took it as a sign. I don't get many of those anymore. <laughs> no, we always end up having this meeting at this time. But it's the usual affair. Can we make peace? No. Oh, how tragic. Honestly, I was beginning to wonder why I kept tending. And it's bad habit I started a long time ago. Perhaps I just like meeting the emissary to gloat. <laughs> but you have provided something quite new to talk about. Maybe you're a random die roll. Or maybe the Unity is finally responding to all my hard work. I've simply found that it's the quickest way. Talking, forming alliances, waiting for the right moment to commit theft. It's all so tiresome. I'll admit, you getting away has been the most interesting thing to happen in quite some time. As soon as I realized what had happened, I knew I needed to wait until this meeting with the Emissary. 
to decide what to do about you. Whoever created the artifacts and built those temples is playing a game with us. One whose prize is access to the center of all creation. There are no rules. Whoever gets all the pieces wins. And I've won. Over and over. I don't kill for the unity. I find the easiest pathway to it. I'm sure you have more questions. Ask. I know we are not the same people we met in our universes. Still, it is good to see you again, old friend. When all the artifacts are assembled, the device they create is called the Armillary. In many ways, it's a model of the multiverse itself. Through it, you can reach the Unity. And from there, you can become Starborn. You've seen the terror the Hunter causes. Every time a Starborn goes through the Unity, they get more artifacts, find more temples, gain more power. We can't let more like him abuse these gifts to destroy whatever's in their way. Different. I never know who you are when I meet a new version. But so much of you stays the same. It's hard. But each universe is precious in its own way. Mine will never have its original you in it again, as yours won't have its real me. It's not an easy experience to describe, but the Unity will speak to you. Offer you the chance to become Starborn. You will be leaving this universe behind to be reborn. Everything you were before will be gone. Maybe that's why it offers the choice. Compassion? Or is it testing us? Before you leave, I want to give you something. A way to another artifact, but also a lesson in how dangerous they can be. Seek the moon of old Earth. There are secrets there you must discover for yourself. Here, to open the way. Yes, I will say no more. And I am sorry we have not always been forthcoming. I hope you will see what I have seen. You should also talk to your colleagues in Constellation. I am sure they have gathered more information on the remaining artifacts in the fringes of space. Part of me wonders what they will all say about what you have learned. But I will leave that to you. In their footsteps, completed in their footsteps. I'm gonna go to Nova Galactic Research Station. Final glimpses, return to Lodge. <coughs> <coughs> I want to talk to people first before I... Is something amiss? It's a rare thing to know that right here and now... Might just be the best days of your life. Is there a way to go faster than the speed of light? And none of that grab tech cheating? I don't know what you're talking about. It's a strange feeling. Knowing you're living through some real history. What's next on the agenda? You're handling this whole captain thing Saving really well, you know. Galaxy. Saving... Ships detached. We're clear.
All right, I think I'm gonna go back to lodge. Hmm. And then talk to everybody, then call it a day, cause I have to go do something. <clears throat> I would, I would still, I would still keep on recording if it wasn't for that fact that I have to do something. Been stationed here for years now, and I'm always finding something new. <clears throat> Insulation. It's always nice to come home. Hey, I've been talking with the others, and I'd like to get everyone together to say goodbye. You know, to Sarah. Thank you. It wouldn't be the same without you there. I'll have everything set up in a few days. Mateo told us about your pilgrim's voyage. You found it, didn't you? The meaning of unity. Wait, say that again? Multiple universes? You can't possibly mean what I think you mean. Yes, I wouldn't mind a little more detail. I don't even want to think about the physiological changes you'd need to travel between universes. Plus what it would do to the mind? Enlightenment? Or oblivion? Like the hunter. You have the opportunity to reach the closest thing to your god that might exist. And you're second-guessing it? One doesn't approach the afterlife without some trepidation. You're right. We have to see the unity for ourselves. Uh, not to make a sharp turn in a grand tale, but... I got the eye fixed up. Bruised, but still blinking. Let me know when you're ready to follow up on what it's seen. No more Starborn have shown up. Yet. It's silly, but I can't stop thinking about the idea that there are more of me out there. Even just one more Noel is crazy to consider, but... Dozens? Hundreds? An infinite number of them? How different might they, m might we all be? Am I not even remotely the unique individual I thought I was? My head is spinning just considering it. Well, I'm glad you seem so certain of that. I'll admit, I'm not that sure at all. Let's see, who else do we have to talk to? Barrett? There's that empty feeling again. Whenever someone's gone, there's like a hole in the lodge where they used to be. Where's where is everybody? Let's have to talk to the lodge has been measurably reduced. Huh? Oh. I, I thought I had a grip on the situation. I'm not so sure anymore. The Sanctum Universum believes that God wanted us to travel the stars. That's gotten us here. Is this... Could this be the next step in that journey? Is this what we were meant to learn out here? Could the unity... Could that be God? Or a, a way to reach him? Oh yeah? That would be something, no question. The one <laughs> thing I'm sure of is that we have to see this through. We need to find the rest of the artifacts. All right, Walter, where's Walter? We can pay to fix the damages, but, well, some things are irreplaceable. You forget how much you take a place like the Lodge. Counter to everything I've said and believed before, I've caught myself wondering if we ever should have started this search. If this is all true, and I have it right, 
We've potentially started a chain of events that will create more of these Starborn. Or worse, enable the ones we've seen to become even stronger. I am not fond of either of those options. So maybe now we have no choice but to finish this journey before one of them does. No, I suppose we never really do. But I don't see any other possibilities right now. Look, I don't like the idea of siding with either one of these groups. I'd much rather see someone from Constellation get there first. I trust any of us far more than these Starborn. If you want to talk, make it quick. I think I'm late for Noel's science lesson. These last glimpses from the eye are from the farthest fringes of known space. Could be the only remaining pieces outside the hands of the Stargon. Catch a smile out there. Freya and Indium. <laughs> Pretty sure I've been to these into Indium. Not sure about Freya. Let's see. I want to wait to uh, for the memorial. Maybe I would come up with something to say, but I've got nothing. So instead, I thought I would quote something that gave me comfort a long time ago. Is God real? The more proper question would be, is reality divine? Existence itself is a mystery which yearns to be uncovered. What is goodness but a comparison to the good? What is existence but a participation in being? For where the diversity of the universe inspires awe and wonder, it exists only in contrast to a simplicity so pure that it may only be understood as primordial and even divine. Our essence is what was imagined by its mind. But what we consider imagining and what we consider mind are in fact so far beyond our understanding that even these metaphors are like the tiny white caps on a massive surging sea. There's more, but those are the parts that speak to me the most. I, um... Was really thoughtful, Mateo. Thank you. Does anyone else want to say anything? Thank you. If anyone else wants to say something. I don't often speak about what I believe in. It seems so redundant with how I live. But death it's one of those occasions where it's hard not to look inward. Our friend is gone. There's no afterlife or 
our second meetings. No god in heaven that is curating a perfect ending for me. So it's up to us. We are what lives on. The pain of loss inspires us to greater action than that is the good that comes from Humanity is what truly creates our world. We are the ones that judge things to be good or evil, joyful or mournful. Let us take responsibility for it. Let us remember what we have lost. Walter, are you part of the House of Enlightenment? I never knew that. Yes, well, I like to keep some things private. You all might not like thinking about this, but when we die, Everything about us breaks down, decomposes, gets eaten up by insects and microbes. Or due to the lack of a biosphere, we are simply carried away by space and time until we sizzle in a distant sun's corona or get pulled in some gravitational field and coalesce with other debris. Not comforting, huh? But I disagree. Do you know what I find uncomfortable? The thought that after I die, the universe is just going to stand still forever. Could you imagine? The fact is that the universe goes on. That life goes on. That things do not just sit still. That right there is the comfort that I need. Yeah, we die. And some people go way before they should. But the universe doesn't care. Not because it's evil, but because it's infinite ever expanding and who wouldn't want to be a part of infinity even if it's just for a short while listen we don't worry about ourselves before we were born do we of course not we emerge from the universe as we return to it and for one beautiful moment we are here together um yes that certainly was an interesting perspective Barrett. Everyone is in mourning. I understand, but I cannot quite share in their emotion. I have seen death. I have lost people I considered close. But this is... It is not the same. I cannot explain why. I am not sure I am making sense. Thank you. I have things I wish to discuss with you. When you have time. Is anybody else going to speak? Because I spoke already. Ah, yes. I remember you, the wedding. I was so happy for both of you. I wish the circumstances of my visit were better. Unfortunately, this isn't the first constellation funeral I've been to. After 35 years, you say goodbye to a lot of friends. I hope you don't mind me saying, but I feel numb just thinking about it. Sarah meant the world to me. She was the future. I knew it as soon as I met her. Oh, yes. I was Sebastian Bench's protege. 
If that gives you any idea of how long I was part of our little club. Knew him, argued with him, tried to carry on his memory when he vanished. Sebastian will be back tomorrow, we always used to say. <laughs> it reminded us that he was still here, in the bones of this old building. Exactly the same as when you met her, I bet. Determined, fearless, with just a small hint of delight on her face when she knew she was winning, eh? My only problem as a mentor was trying to convince her to be more tactful. <laughs> Those old military instincts would always get her in trouble. Yes, she could make me so angry or so happy. We used to joke that we were married. <laughs> I bet relationships in Constellation are still messy, aren't they? I'm more of a family than an organization. All the former lines bleed together. It makes the losses sting harder. But I hope it means the time you had together was all the more important. That's how I like to think of it anyway. I hope this is all okay. Between fixing things up and sending out messengers and getting all the paperwork done, it's not much. Good. I... Good. Sorry, if I talk any longer, I'm gonna start crying. Um, could you excuse me? You know, what you're feeling right now is a chemical reaction whose evolutionary goal is promoting social cohesion. Never seems to work for me. No matter how many times I do this, I feel less attached, not more. I, uh, I, I don't remember. I'm sure I did. I thought when the funeral was over, when everyone went home that night, that it was over. Turns out, sometimes you need more than that. They're always hard, always. And it's okay to sob, to yell, to go to sleep, do whatever it takes. As long as your grief doesn't cause more grief for yourself or anybody else, it's okay. Well, look at us. Two lone wolves howling at the moon on the same night. You know, if there's one piece of advice I can actually give you, it's that lost loved ones have a way of coming back to you. One day you'll be sweeping out some old shelf or digging through a desk and there it'll be. Some old paperweight of theirs. Or a piece of jewelry they gave you. Half jokingly. Theoretically, of course. Nope, not even for a moment. Funerals are there to remind survivors that they aren't alone. The dead have already finished their part in our story. You're welcome. Chat for a bit? Normally, I hate talking to people at funerals. Let's talk. But, well, when you have time, of course. You don't believe in the afterlife, do you? I mean, this might be the worst time to bring it up, but... Yes. Won't we all? Well, I've taken up enough of your time. It almost feels wrong to be grieving. Selfish. No amount of tears will bring the dead back. It's just easier to feel guilty, if you'll excuse me. said that to me like a thousand times. It's just that I feel so alone. With Sarah, it was like starting a family again. 
The way she'd smile at me reminded me of my mom. I missed that so much. Now she's gone, and I have to start over, like I did before. It's not the same. Sarah was starting to feel like, well, like she was my new mom. I really don't want to go through this again. It's too hard. I can't believe Sarah's gone. It's not fair. Really? You mean it? I, I would love for that to be true. Hey, um, thanks for talking to me. I'm actually feeling a little better knowing that you care how I feel. Maybe I'm not so alone after all. I am told these types of gatherings are a sad occasion. That assumption appears to be correct. I appreciate you verifying my analysis, although I am certain my thanks will do little to improve your current psychological trauma. If you would like though, I can add some consoling language to my programming. It will take some time to adapt, but it will be okay. How was that? I will note that feedback for later. Hi. So many people here. So many people saying goodbye. Uh, is this supposed to make everything okay? Make everyone feel better? It's just, it doesn't change anything, does it? I just feel like I want to be a million light years away from everyone. I want to be alone for a while, okay? This is harder than I expected. Is it quieter in the lodge or is it just me? Death is a bastard. Comes for us all. You know, there's an old Aquila story about two pioneers who got lost trying to find a new frontier to settle. One of them takes ill. Clear he's not gonna make it, he turns to his partner and says, don't bury me. Let the ground take what it's due. I'd rather be a ghost chasing after you than walk through the pearly gates knowing an eternity of loneliness until you get there. Sad story, huh? You look after yourself. Drink? You got time for a quick chat? Pour one out I to the blackest sea? Able. Two old friends. May their ghosts go past the edges of space to the great beyond. I. I, I am sorry. My head is swimming. Good talking to you. Is that everybody? I'm not sure if I want to cry or not. Even knowing it was going to happen, it's still sad.
I'm not sure if I want to leave. What? She's not. <clears throat> what the fuck does that mean? Okay, I still have to talk to those two guys. This is amazing. The, the, the unity, the multiverse, this is everything and more, literally. No kidding. Think of the dissertations, boundless topics, no bounds, except the books. They're bound. This explains so much, though. They're disorganized, petty, weird, and also deeply fascinating at the same time. Because they are just people. We never rule that out, but it feels so good to know we weren't fighting against robot alien ghost gods or something. No, not even slightly. They're people who obtain power in some unfair way, and some of them have used that power to cause suffering, and others just didn't want to share. But that's what regular people do every day of the year. True. We need to approach this critically and carefully. We can't just jump in. Or, uh, I, I mean, we could, I guess. But it all comes back to this. We don't know what will happen if you enter the Unity. You might lose yourself or become a two-headed space shark. There are too many variables. What? No. I just have to go back and forth about it for a while first and then I'll be completely fine. Just part of my process. Of course, at the end of the day, it's your choice. But I will say this. Our entire purpose in Constellation is to explore. Why would we stop now? I'm with you. I'm not gonna hold you back. But if you, you know, become evil or whatever, I'm also not gonna have your back. Anytime. The possibility of turning evil aside? <laughs> I appreciate you taking the lead on this. You're guiding Constellation to new frontiers, new discoveries, and we should all follow your example. Uh, on that note, there's something else I'd like to discuss with you, if you have time. It's not on the scale of entering the Unity, but it is tangentially related. Thanks. This has been swirling in my brain goo for a while now. So, I've been pondering over what's happened and what it all means. And I've got a favor to ask. A teensy-weensy favor. About the size of a plank length, really. I think it's time I joined you in the physics bending powers business. <laughs> See if one of those temples works for more than just you. What, you think you're the only one who can walk around in a cape and tights? Granted, <laughs> it's just a theory. But I venture anyone who experiences visions from touching an artifact is now connected to them. You got a vision, I got a vision. You got a power, ergo. Marvelous. I'm glad you're as gung-ho about this as I am. As it so happens, I've already talked to Vladimir. Seems our eye in the sky is back up and running. He sent me the coordinates for the temple already. We just have to visit. Welcome back, Captain. Yes. You can gloat all you want, so long as you tell me how you came by that information in the first place. Jeez Christ, so much more. I have a curious feeling, knowing that you've seen something that no one else has. 
that you know something no one else does? Remember, you're representing all of us out there. Okay, I have to talk to Sam Coe and everybody. Then I'll possibly end the episode. I'm all ears. Yes, this is yours now. Oh, let's see, New Atlantis, talk with Andrea. What's this? Apply for O. Oh. Give me a moment. Let's just talk to everybody and then we can end the episode. Because this is a lot of talking. I also want to kind of change my outfit a little bit because I've been freestyle rangering it for a while. What is it? I wanted to thank you. For giving me the chance to work with you. I know we met under, um... Unusual circumstances. You seem to be acclimating well to Constellation. Are you enjoying working with them? I think none of us were expecting what we have found. Well, perhaps, Matteo. You have certainly become a vital part of the organization. That is a credit to your abilities. If I may, from what you have seen, do you think I fit in well with the rest of Constellation? No, I do not. But I find it hard to quantify. Many of the other members are polite, but distant. I worry that my background and my actions concern them. I have not shared much, but everyone knows I worked with smugglers for years. I am no stranger to violence and death. I know. For those that have not lived it, it can be difficult to imagine or accept. Others here have seen conflict, but for more noble causes. Vladimir is the only one here who can begin to understand. He was the one who pressed the group to include me. I lack his charm. He puts others at ease. I fear my presence does the opposite. No, but it seems to make things much, much easier. I... I envy that. I know this seems... trivial. Uh, perhaps childish. I have just always relied only on myself. I have never been surrounded by people like this. By a group I... I wish to be a part of. Does that make sense? Thank you. That is reassuring. Discussing these things is challenging for me. I hope now you can better understand why I wanted to keep the circumstances of our meeting quiet. I wanted to thank you for not saying anything to Vladimir. I know that you said you wouldn't, but it is still a relief. I would like my contributions to Constellation to amount to more than violence. It would have been, to some. Thank you for talking this over with me. It is good to know that at least one member of Constellation understands me. Hey, Dad? Will 
If you have the time, I wish to speak to you. Sure. Everybody Thank wants to speak much. with me. It's crazy. You haven't asked me to do that in a long time. And will you do funny voices for the characters? Like you used to when I was little? You just try and stop me. Uh, why is everybody want to talk? Let's turn like the grab drive so we can float I around. I never tire of your company. Yes. So, we finally have all the answers. And yet here I stand, feeling like I understand even less than I did before. This oh yeah. Talk of the unity of a, a multiverse, dead friends appearing again. It is all simply too much. Does it? Perhaps you find all this satisfactory, but I am afraid I do not. We must take the word of a murderer and follow him into the unity? What if it does nothing the Starborn have claimed? How can you be so sure? They have thwarted us at every turn, and now they just give up? They killed Sarah to stop us from getting the artifacts. If they would back down now, then what was the point? What does that death mean? Why put us through any of this? Even if everything the Starborn have said is true, if you pass into this unity and come out in... in some other universe, look at who they are, at what they have become. They have the faces and voices of people you know, but are nothing like them. Are you not at all worried that the same fate would befall you? That you would become someone unrecognizable to the rest of us? Now you sound like Sarah, but you are not wrong. I will do my best to assume the best, but you cannot blame me for preparing for the worst. We should get back to it. Now that we know what to work towards, there is no time to waste. Did you need something? All right then. All right, I think that's everybody that needs to be talked to. What about Cora? Your ship is way bigger than Dad's. Well, we're talking about what could be an infinite number of parallel universes, right? If yeah. that's really true, how <clears throat> different do you think they are? Like, are they really similar to this one, or really weird? Is there one where we're all lizard people? Or one where time runs backwards? What do you think? Infinity means anything's possible, so yeah, all that and more. It's so crazy to think about. Well, I kind of do hope it's all true. It really would mean that anything is possible. See you later. All right, let's see what the adoring fan has to say. I'm curious. Does he have any input? Whenever I'm lost, I think. Let me know no. if you want to. Talk some more. Hey, if you need something, happy to lend a hand. Need to check on the girl child. All right, let's see. What was the mission? Paris from beyond.
All right, you know what? I'm gonna have that's to end the episode. Here. It starts to become a target. I guess that's why New Atlantis and even Sidonia have as much security as they do. Yeah, but I'm gonna have to end the episode here for now. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. Do leave a like, subscribe, comment, share the video. What level am I at? Level 53. Sweet. Let's see, is there anything I could put it into? Oh, well, and I shall see you all in the next episode. Till next time, bye-bye.